Now, packet delay. There are four components. The first component is the nodal processing delay, but we just call it processing delay. It occurs right here when the packet arrives at the router. Router here checks the bit errors in case there's any and decides quickly which output link the packet should go out. Next, queuing delay. That's the time the packet waits until it's turn to go out on the output link. It occurs right here at the buffer space where packet queued up. But the amount of weight depends on the congestion level of the router. Component three is the transmission delay, and it's calculated this way, R being the link bandwidth, L being the packet length. And the time to transmit the packet out will be L divided by R. And it's happening right here at the interface between the router and the link. Final component, propagation delay. Provided the length of the physical link and the propagation speed of signals traveling the physical link, we know that the propagation delay is D divided by S. So essentially, the time for the packet to traverse the physical link. Be careful. S here is the distance the signal can travel per second. R here is the number of bits the transmitter can push out per second. Although I call S the propagation speed, R the link speed sometime. But there are two very different quantities. Now let's go through a couple examples to exercise calculating transmission delay and propagation delay. What you're seeing here is a caravan of 10 cars. Now the way to think of this scenario is this. Uh, think of cars being bits and caravans being a packet. So we have a packet containing 10 bits in a sense. The cars will be propagating at the speed of 100 kilometers per hour over 100 kilometers reaching the second booth. Tow booth number one here takes 12 seconds to service the car. All right. Question here is asking how long until the packet is lined up before the second router? All right, so transmission speed well, transmission delay plus the propagation delay. So what is the transmission delay? We have uh, 12 seconds serving per bit, and then there are 10 bits. So the time to push the entire caravan out of the tow booth is two minutes. And then the propagation delay is for the car to travel 100 kilometer. So 100 kilometer dividing the propagation speed. So we have 60 minutes here. And so altogether, 62 minutes before the entire caravan to reach the second tow booth. So you see, in this case, transmission speed, very fast. Propagation speed, slow. In the second example, the configuration is uh, slightly different, mainly propagation speed, and transmission speed. Propagation speed now goes really fast, but transmission speed much slower. So question here is asking, will the first car arrive at the second tow booth before all the cars are being serviced? Let's see, uh, when will the first car arrive at the second tow booth? So transmission delay, one minute, Propagation delay. So we have a hundred kilometer, uh, but we're traveling a thousand kilometers. So we'll be spending one tenth of an hour propagating, and that's six minutes. Together, seven minutes. So the first car will spend seven minutes before arriving at the second tow booth. Now, seven minutes is also the time to service seven cars for this first tow booth. That means we have three cars uh, that are still behind at the first tow booth. So yes, okay. when the first bit arrive at the next router, there could still be bits not yet transmitted out. 
from the previous router. So in this case, where the propagation speed is really fast, transmission uh, rate very low, uh, you had this weird situation. Good, uh, let's sum up packet delay. So there are four components, pro processing delay, queuing delay, transmission delay, and propagation delay. Transmission delay, very low. Typically, microseconds, uh, we just you know ignore the processing delay when we calculate packet delay. Transmission delay, propagation delay, very easy to calculate. L divided by R, this quantity is often significant and especially the case for low speed links. Propagation delay, slightly harder. It varies quite a bit from microseconds to hundreds of milliseconds. So this extreme is for uh, satellite links, for example. Uh, we've seen earlier, it could go up to 200 or even more milliseconds. Sometimes the trans-Atlantic or trans-Pacific links, very long optic fibers could also take up to 100 milliseconds. Now, in the process of calculating packet delay, the hardest component is this queuing delay. Now, it's very hard to calculate accurately because it depends on the congestion level at the router. Just to give you a sip of how hard it is, let's define again, R being the link bandwidth, L being the packet size. Let's add one more variable, the average arrival rate. So, L multiply A is the average bid arrival rate. That is also the incoming traffic rate. R is the outgoing traffic rate. So we could define traffic intensity being LA divided by R. So when that quantity is close to zero, that means incoming rate very low, outgoing rate very high, then no bids really need to wait. So queuing delay very small. And it's depicted here. When LA divided by R is very small, queuing delay also very small. The other extreme is here. When the intensity is greater than 1, that means there are more bits coming in than more bits going out. And when time goes on and on and on, uh, the newly arrival bits will need to wait longer and longer and longer. Uh. And it's pretty much here, uh, approaching infinity. Now, when the intensity is between very small to one, uh, delay is simply growing. And as we will be reaching, approaching infinity, you see that the curve grows quickly like that, okay? close to an exponential trend. Hard to estimate queuing delay. In fact, it takes a whole semester for a professor to teach about how one calculates queuing delay. And at the graduate uh, school, there's advanced queuing delay that one can also take to make sure that you do a better job. Okay, estimating queuing delay for highly dynamic incoming traffic. All right. So that was the theory part of the packet delay. One can also find out what is the real internet packet delay by uh, trying out this program, trace route. Okay. What it does is to measure delay from a source one hop at a time all the way to a destination. So this is what I'm drawing here, source to destination, and it's sending three packets one at a time uh, to reach each of the routers along the way. So router there receiving such a packet would return by sending a reply back to the sender. Now the sender there can time the interval between the transmission and receiving the reply and gets one estimation of the round trip time between the sender to the router. So it works like this. Three probes to the first router. Three round trip time estimation three probes to the second router, three round-trip time estimations to the second router. 
and this goes on and on until it reaches uh, the final destination and then the trace route program stops. The output of the program looks like this. This is an example trace routing from Gaia UMass.edu to Oracle Conference. So this is saying first hub router's name is cs-gw at IP address 128. something 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 and there are three round trip time estimations, one and one and two milliseconds respectively. What's a little bit interesting is between hub seven and eight. There, you see at hub seven, round trip time was about 22 milliseconds, but suddenly to hub eight, the delay is about 100 milliseconds. So that is the transatlantic links connecting from US to Europe. Uh, a little bit more interesting is also hub 17 and 18. You see stars, stars, stars. That means the routers are not responding. Okay, And it could be because the probing messages are lost or the replying messages are lost. But it's more likely that the router is turned off replying to these, uh, I mean, routers are on, but the routers turn off replying these probing messages. Well, well, let's try, um, you know, sending a trace route ourselves from here. How about that? Let's go over to a terminal and then trace route to say, say Google. How about that? Right. Good. First hub router. Well, it didn't tell me the name of the router, so chances high that the router doesn't have a name. Okay. Delay reasonable. 10 milliseconds, 3 milliseconds, and another 3 milliseconds. Router 2 here. Well, either the probing messages are lost or a router turns off the functionality of returning to trace route probes. Now third hop, ooh, 30 milliseconds, suddenly much higher. Oh, okay, fifth hop, uh, delay not much higher than the third hop. And you see here, uh, when it's star, 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 it takes longer time. It's because uh, when the trace route program sends the probing packet, there's a timeout interval. Traceroute will wait until the time exceeds the interval. Then it determines that hey, the router is probably not going to respond anymore. So forget about the first probe, send the next probe. Next probe waits also some amount of time. Time out, give up, and then sends the third probe. Okay, good. Finally, we reached www.google.com. But the name is actually quite different. TSA something something. Hmm, interesting. And the end-to-end -end delay, end-to-end -end round trip delay to www.google.com is about 20 something milliseconds. Now, something that's very odd is here. Hop 8. Uh, if you look closer, we do have three round trip time estimates. But each time, number for A here along the way, the ACE hub is slightly different. IP address is 101, 49, and 97. So you see here, packets, although going to the same destination, coming from the same source, as they go on the internet, um, the routes could, could actually change. Also, you see, hey, the time it takes to reach hub 5, 30 milliseconds. But the time it takes to reach hub 12 is only 20 something seconds. So uh, the load of the internet changes also over time. So sometimes when you are probing to a closer router, it could take a longer time because it was busier there. But when the traffic 
low drops. And when you're probing a router that are far th farther away, you could get a shorter round trip delay. Yeah, very curious. And uh, let's go back to the slide. And it turned out that it's a good time to start the next quiz.